Louisiana is not actually an island. It is an oval-shaped piece of land surrounded by bayous and marshlands. The island is full of beautiful vegetation, animals, a salt mine, and is home to the Tabasco factory. Another important but less known product, spicy and full of flavor, Catherine Avery emerged from here as well. Catherine Buckner Avery, known as the Florence Nightingale of the Bayou Country, promoted the medical demands for the poor and isolated members of society, put herself at risk to help those in need, and generously donated her time and money to the advancement of the health field in rural areas of Louisiana. She was born into a privileged background as the second daughter of Daniel and Catherine Avery on May 17, 1896. After moving to Avery Island when she was only six months old, Miss Avery was taught by a governess until she was 13, went to Miss Blake's school in New Orleans, and successfully graduated from Birmingham School for Girls in Birmingham, Pennsylvania in 1916. Doing her own thing long before it was fashionable, Miss Avery wanted to follow her dreams to be a nurse in World War I, but she was too young. Her parents, products of the Victorian era, believed that young women should be protected and chaperoned at all times, reluctantly agreed for her to train close at home at Tour Infirmary in New Orleans. Catherine stated, I think my family thought it wouldn't last. But it did. Despite facing adversity in the form of Spanish flu and pneumonia, she endured a steady track and became a registered nurse in 1921. By 1927, she returned to her rural roots and became one of the first 10 public health nurses to serve the state of Louisiana. In May of 1927, just like the Mississippi River, the course and direction of her life shifted. You ended up with uh, something like 90,000 people who were displaced by this flood in 1927, and they ended up in, uh, in camps, uh, refugee camps, that because of the time period seemed to have been uh, uh, racially segregated. and. Uh, people lived in these camps while they were waiting for the water to go down and Nurse Avery worked in one of these uh, flood refugee camps in Cade and uh, you know health and hygiene is a major issue whenever you get a lot of refugees living together in a small area so she was helping to take uh, care of these refugees making sure that there were hygienic measures that were being followed, but also treating people who were ill. Catherine Avery was in charge of the camp around Cade where the refugees lived in tents. She insisted that medical care should be prioritized by need, not by race, which was a revolutionary idea in those segregationist days. According to her nephew, Mr. Ken Rangel, She lived in those camps for weeks at a time, treating the sick and comforting the destitute. Since the flood left many people stranded, she used a pirogue and powdered it to her clients' houses to give immunizations against typhoid and provide checkups. Miss Avery helped pregnant mothers deliver babies in their own homes. Once the flood waters receded, Miss Avery continued to keep civilians healthy by helping to reestablish sanitary living conditions. After the flood, she went before an all-male legislature to ask for funding to help the flood victims. In the years that followed, Miss Avery became known as the Florence Nightingale of the Bayou as she continued to inoculate children in their rural areas who were unable to come into doctor's offices and clinics for their shots. Miss Avery stated, Old people were frightened of needles. If a disease came along, you just survived it or didn't. We worked very hard to gain people's confidence in us so that we could immunize both parents and children. And I had a personal experience with Miss Avery. In 1933, my grandparents were living on Dale Street, New Iberia. My mother and I were visiting them one day, and she said, Elaine, let's go to the grocery store. Now, the grocery store right across the street. So we went, and when we walked into the grocery store, there was a lady in a white dress and a table with a bunch her of things on. The lady turns around and she had a needle in her hand. My mother told me it took three people to hold me down to get that shot. Evidently, I wasn't very happy. Miss Avery went to wherever the patients were, even down the bayou, 
to give shots to people, to children along the way. She made a difference in the lives of people in our area. She was a wonderful person. Tuberculosis, also known as TB, is a bacteria found in the lungs that infects the body and can stay dormant until the immune system weakens or with age. In 1929, Ms. A reformed the Tuberculosis Association in New Iberia by personally selling Christmas seals to earn the $250 needed to begin the work. At this time in history, it was rare for a woman to drive alone, but Miss Avery single-handedly traveled to all parts of the parish to treat trappers, farmers, shrimpers, and their families by inoculating them against this disease. Catherine Avery established the New Iberia Crippled Children's Association in the early 1930s to help children that were afflicted with polio and other spinal injuries. This was before Jonas Sog discovered the polio vaccine, therefore many children fell victims to it. Because I was born with a condition called a wry dick. Well, someone told my parents that I could get that fixed for free if I went to New Iberia to the courthouse to a place called the Iberia Crip Children's Clinic, which had been organized by Miss Catherine. So my Avery. daddy brought me there. And I remember the room was full of children who were much worse off than I was. There were some in wheelchairs, there were some in crutches, and there were some in their mother's arms. As a result of birth defects or a disease that was very popular then called polio, I felt like I was in the wrong place. These were people who really needed to see the doctor. Miss Avery must have been somewhere in the background. I remember a lady buzzing, buzzing, buzzing. Eventually, I saw the doctor. I was in New Orleans. First thing you know, it was so quick. The doctor evaluated me. He put the Miss uh, Avery found transportation for me to get to New Orleans. It was a miracle for me. Once a month for 50 years that she started and those children would come in crippled. It was called the Iberia Crippled Children's Clinic. And they would be in this process for a short period of time. And then they would be miraculously cured as a result of the skills of these wonderful physicians and this program. And so I want you to imagine behind me a thousand people 2000? I don't know how they did it. From the program that she established in the 1930s. I heard of one case that a family's child was going to have surgery and the mother didn't have a washing machine to wash the sheets. And Miss Avery saw that condition and she did nothing but come to town, make a phone call to a person she knew could afford a gift and a washer was sent to their home so that that child could have a nice bed. That's the kind of gift that she gave to the children of our very parish. And I'm just one, and I got this much of her charity, of her leadership, of her generosity. She was a true human. She saw a need in the people around her the children around her who were crippled and she said she had to do something about it. And she did hundreds of things. And I want the world to know what a wonderful person she was and how many people benefited from her being part of Iberia Parish's health and wellness. Parrot fever was a disease that several people contracted in South Louisiana, uh, including the New Iberia area, and the scientific name for it is psittacosis. It's caused by a bacteria that's transmitted from birds to humans, and it's, it's, it's pretty lethal. Uh, the, the mortality rate, if you caught the disease, was uh, 50%. And uh, Nurse Avery, 
volunteered to work at a quarantine house in New Iberia on Pollard Street near City Park. And every day she would help to nurse these uh, uh, victims of this, of this disease, uh, knowing that she herself might catch the disease and could even die. In fact, as I recall, uh, one or two of the other nurses caught the disease and I think at least one of them died. So it was a pretty serious uh, disease. Eight years ago, Blue Cross Blue Shield created an award given annually in her honor called the Katherine Buckner Avery Award. The award is given to a nurse that supports the values of Blue Cross Blue Shield of Louisiana, promotes nursing, and portrays a positive image for BCBSLA. But perhaps her greatest accomplishment was the changes she made in the lives of hundreds of children whose quality of life was improved because of her work. It was she that made me brave. She singled me out from the other kids to cheer me on. And soon I was never afraid of anything.